In today's video, we're going to talk about how to run a curl command in a Jenkins pipeline. You've been tasked with integrating one of your Jenkins pipelines with a REST API. And you think to yourself, there has to be a plugin for that. And you wouldn't be wrong. But as we go into today's video, we're going to see that just using curl will take care of the job for you. Here's today's starting point. We have a Jenkins controller version 2.289.1. When it was installed, we used install suggested plugins, so no extra plugins installed. We also have an agent with the label of Linux. Both the controller and the agent are running CentOS 7.9. And by default, with CentOS 7.9, curl is installed. So first off, let's go ahead and create a job just to verify that curl is accessible through our pipeline. So we'll click on new item. I'm going to call this test curl and I'll type pipeline and click OK. Let's scroll down to the pipeline section and we'll paste in this pipeline script. So we can see here we're saying agent any. The step is just curl dash dash version. Let's see what happens here. Click on save and build now. And it starts up and we can see here that we have curl 7. 29.0. So we're able to access curl from within our pipeline. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change our script to actually make a post against a REST API. Now I have a little echo service that I'm running so we can see what happens. So let's go, and go back into our job and modify the job and we're going to change our curl line to be curl dash x post because I'm posting to a service that is running on this IP address on this port. Let's click on save and do a build now. And we can see here in the second run that we're doing a post and it echoes back to us all of the content that we sent over. In this case, my echo service is just giving me back the headers that were sent over and the host name, the IP address, all of this just coming back from the echo service. Now let's do one more thing. Let's make a modification to our Jenkins file to actually post a body to that service using curl. But I want to show you something here that might be a little confusing. Let's go to configure and let's change our sh to this now new long line. Let's take a look at it. So curl x post, not real surprising. We're passing in a header of content type application JSON. Again, no big deal. You'll notice that our curl is wrapped with single quotes. So when we wrap the quotes around content type, we're using double quotes. But here, once we get into the body, the dash D, what you're going to see is we are escaping our single quotes because we have double quotes within our JSON body. So what I can't do is just say single quote there and on the other end of our body because that would close out the single quotes around the curl. So in my case, I can use just a single backslash to escape that single quote. In your case, you might need to do multiple backslashes to make that work. You'll just have to test it out, see how it works for you. And then we go on to the rest of this line and it's just what we saw before we are posting to our service on port 8080. So let's go ahead and click on save and click on build now. And what we'll see here for the third run is we have our post with our body. You can see that the escapes were allowed. And when we take a look at it, we see our body was posted in. And in this case of how this service works, it just returns back the JSON values that I passed in. So you might be asking yourself, why would you want to use curl or any other type of command like HTTP IE, anything that you can run from the command line. Well, first, it eliminates the dependency on a plugin. If you don't need a plugin to do your work, then you're able to minimize the risk over time when you are upgrading your controllers. That's just one less plugin that you have to remember to upgrade. The second and biggest reason why you want to be able to use curl or HTTP IE or any of the other command line tools is that you're able to work with those commands outside the context of Jenkins. 
and you're able to get your commands as close to correct as possible so you know that they work, and then you can bring them pretty much straight into a Jenkins pipeline, copy and paste it in, and see if it works. As we saw in my example, I had to escape my body with the backslash with the single quote, otherwise the job would fail. So by being able to completely test outside of the context of Jenkins, bringing those steps in, then you're able to, without any dependencies on Jenkins, build out your pipelines as you ran your commands on the command line. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.